the next question from Naveed Ahmed, an Afghan immigrant living in Canada. I have a question about living in a non-Muslim country. I live in Brampton, Canada, where I can practice Islam in the best way. We have mosques nearby and I have all the freedom in terms of clothing and practicing Islam. Do I still have to make Hijra to a Muslim country? My father being a good follower of Islam recommends me to take a decision to make Hijra to a Muslim country. I would appreciate to get a reply from you. A similar question is posed by Saad Khan, Mississauga, Canada. In your talks, you have emphasized not to migrate to non-Muslim countries like North America. As I was residing in the Middle East, I couldn't continue because no one is allowed to stay there because of citizenship. In Pakistan, there is no Sharia law. So is it permissible for us to migrate in such a situation to a non-Muslim country where our life is safe and we can practice our religion? A similar question is posed by Muhammad Shariful Islam from Bangladesh. Is it permissible to move from one Muslim country to another non-Muslim country for a better life? One more similar question by Abdul Mannan residing in Ireland. It's come on the Facebook just now. Dr. Zakir Naik, we love you for the sake of Allah. My question is, what is the legal point of view of Muslims staying in a non-Muslim country? Question asked by the four brothers. And many such similar questions have come regarding Muslims staying in a non-Muslim country. This can be divided into two types. A Muslim which is born in a non-Muslim country, what he has to do. And a Muslim who migrates from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentions us and gives us guidance regarding this topic. Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 97, when the angels of death come to take the soul of the person who has died in sin against his soul and asks him, what is your state? And he replies that we have lived in oppression on this earth. Our state was very bad, oppressed. Then the angel replies that the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was spacious enough for you to migrate from the evil. And for such people, Allah continues, their abode is hell, a refuge of evil. And this verse was revealed in context in Muslims living in non-Muslim countries. This verse, if you read the Nuzul Quran, and people write in bracket, mentioning for the Muslim living in non-Muslim country. It says that when the angel of death comes to take the soul of the person who has died in sin against the soul and ask them, what is your state? They reply, we lived in oppression on this earth. And the reply is that the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was spacious for you to move away from evil. That means the world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that if you are living in a space where there is oppression, where there is shirk, where there is activity which is un-Islamic, you have to migrate. And if you do not, Allah says, your abode is hellfire. A refuge which is evil. The next verse says, in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 98, as to those who are in oppression, and men, and women, and children who don't have the power or do not have the facility to migrate. Verse number 99 says, Allah will forgive them. Verse number 100 says that as to those who sacrifice their home and leave their land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them many a refuge in the world. And if the person dies as a refugee away from his home, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him. Here Allah is talking about those who do hijrah for the sake of Allah and his Rasul. With those who leave their home for the sake of Allah and his Rasul and take refuge. The land is very big. He'll find many refuge. 
And if he dies away from his home as a refugee, for the sake of Allah and his Rasul, Allah will solely reward him. So from this verse, all the scholars, they agree that if a person is living in a non-Muslim land, there can be three options. Number one option is that he cannot practice his deen freely. Practicing deen hidingly is not acceptable. If you cannot practice your deen freely and you cannot call yourselves freely Muslims, then it becomes compulsory for you to migrate. Compulsory. Further, if you are living in a country where you cannot practice your deen freely, cannot call yourself Muslims, cannot do your farais, cannot stay from the haram in a non-Muslim country, it becomes fard for you to migrate. Number two, if you can practice your deen very freely and there is no compulsion on you, you can do all the farais, you can stay away from all the haram, then migrating becomes mustahab but not a fard. But there it is mustahab based on the verse of the Quran. So the scholars say, if you are living in a non-Muslim land where you can call yourself Muslim freely, practice your deen, there is no harassment at all, then migration becomes mustahab but not a fard. And for those people who are weak and do not have the means to migrate, who are oppressed, women, children, don't have the power, don't have the means, for them, if they continue to stay, Allah will forgive them. It is permissible. So these are the three things. Now, coming to the question of can a Muslim migrate from a Muslim country to non-Muslim, that is another question. All the scholars naturally agree, those who are on the Quran and Sunnah. I know some scholars say allowed, especially if you go to Western scholars, they say no problem. To migrate from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country, it is haram unless it be for education or for the purpose of Dawa. For education purpose, you go, you acquire education, come back, no problem. Or if you go there not as a part-time dai, as a full-time dai to deliver the message, then the scholars say it's permissible. But if you just shift from Muslim land to a non-Muslim land for a better living as the questioner posed, it is not permitted at all. And I know there are millions of Muslims who have migrated from Muslim countries, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, to Western countries, USA, Canada, European countries, only basically for a better living. They talk about education, the education will have to come back. The main purpose is for a better living because they can earn more money. This is totally prohibited. Migrating from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country for a better living is prohibited. If you are born in a non-Muslim country, then the options are three. If you can not practice your deen freely, it becomes compulsory to migrate. If you can practice the deen freely, it is mustab to migrate, not a fard. I know there are many Muslims born in non-Muslim countries. A large percentage of the Muslim ummah are living in non-Muslim countries. If they are born there and if they can practice their deen freely, according to me, nowadays there are very few countries in the world, non-Muslim countries in the world, where you can actually practice very freely. And that also in those countries, it will not be total freely, but to a great extent. And I would agree that amongst the Western countries that are available, Canada would be better than the other Western countries. Canada is much better than USA, is much better than other Western countries. In terms for a Muslim to live, because at present, you have a Prime Minister, that is Trudeau, who has more care for humanity and who really cares for giving equal rights to human beings, unlike the other Prime Minister of other Western countries like France or USA, etc. So amongst the Western countries, the best of the worst countries would be Canada. But coming to the question, what is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has requested you to migrate? What is the reason? And our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Abu Dawud, volume number 3, Hadith number 2645. And this Hadith is mentioned in Sahih by Albani. The Prophet said, I disown those Muslims who live amongst the mushrikeen. I disown those Muslims who live amongst the idolaters. It's a Sahih Hadith. The Prophet is disowning all the Muslims who live among the Mushrikeen. The reason is two. Number one is a Muslim may not be able to practice Islam in totality. They may be he can follow some aspects of deen. He cannot freely say he's a Muslim, he cannot freely offer salah, etc. 
And the second is the associated factors of that environment is such that it prevents you from doing the sunnah and the farais and takes you closer to the haram activities. Let me give you a better explanation. There are very few non-Muslim countries that really you can be proud to be Muslims. And in those countries also certain areas, not throughout the country. Secondly, one thing you have to understand that almost all the Western countries, the atmosphere is not very convenient for the Islamic lifestyle. Number one, in almost all the Western countries, there is obscenity. The obscenity is coming on your face. There is alcoholism, there is drug addiction, there is prostitution, and the big associated factor is riba. Most of the countries, most of the places you get involved in riba. It's difficult for you to stay away from riba. What you have to realize, some people may argue that, okay, there's obscenity even in Muslim countries. I agree with you, there are, but the levels differ. You go to a Muslim country, I don't know of any Muslim country in the world which is as close as American obscenity, as close as Canada and obscenity, not at all. Yes, there may be. It may be haram, but the level is less. And in certain non-Muslim countries, which are not the Western countries, the obscenity is less, depending upon the culture. What you have to realize that in the Western country, it is coming at your face, glaring. The moment you walk out, you see billboards of ladies which are scantily dressed, which are dressed with obscene clothes, difficult. In a Muslim country, you may find, but not as much as what you find in the Western countries. So there is no comparison at all. So imagine when you walk, you have to lower your gaze. How can you live? I know there are many Muslims living in Western countries, and I've been to Western countries a lot. I've traveled a lot to America. I've traveled a lot to USA, to Canada, to Western countries. I've given my talk. And there are situations where some of the Muslims come and tell me, okay, when I came to the Western country, I became more Islamic. Possible. That is, yes, I agree with, possible. But that's a small possibility. The chances of a person, a Muslim, going away from his deen is more in the Western countries than in the other parts of the world. More in a Western country than a Muslim country. So what you have to understand that there are possibilities that a person may go from Pakistan to America and become more practicing, may start reading Quran, may start offering Salah, but the percentage is very small. For example, because of Salman Rushdie, he wrote the book, The Satanic Verses, there are thousands of non-Muslims accepted in Islam. That does not mean what Salman Rushdie did is right. What Salman Rushdie did is to be condemned. That's a different question that even though it is wrong, in that wrong thing, it has its own benefits. The majority of people that go to the Western country, they go away from the deen. According to the PEW report, and the PEW report, the PEW report is supposed to be authentic, done by non-Muslims, it says that in USA, in USA, 25% of the Muslims born in Muslim family, they leave their religion every year. Imagine, 25% of the Muslims born in a Muslim family every year leave their deen. But the good part of it is, equal number of people even come close, even accept Islam. So the number of Muslims in USA remains approximately same. The number leaving and number coming is same. That's the reason the number of Muslims approximately, different statistics say in a population of about 350 million people in USA, the Muslims, some say 4 million, some say 5 million, some say 3 million, some say 2 million. It is approximately 1%, but surely not more than 2%. It is close to 1%, 3 million. Imagine 25% every year leave their deen. That means you're playing with fire. I know so many of the Duats who lived in USA, got their citizenship, got their green card, but they came back because they couldn't risk their family. I know many people tell me, oh, because when we go to USA, when we go to Canada, you know, there is a Muslim community center. The moment a person goes away from his country or goes away from the people of like-minded and he stays in a minority, there are possibilities that you make your own community. But that's a very small possibility. I have traveled to USA so many times. I have gone to many conferences. What you have to realize is that what you see is just the outside world. I know many of the good dais whose children have got into drug addiction, 
whose children have got into adultery, into alcoholism. You can't stop it. It is coming on you. Yes, I know even in Muslim countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, people are involved in all these evils, but the percentage is less. For the questioner to say that there is no Sharia followed in Pakistan as though Sharia has followed in Canada, it's totally wrong. Between Canada and Pakistan, Pakistan will be a thousand times better than Canada. I know there are evil practices in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, but yet it is thousand times better than a non-Muslim country. With all the problems, yes, only way the non-Muslim country can be better is you may get more money, you may get more luxury, you may be able to drive a Mercedes car, but you are a very bad businessman. This is only for a few years. You live in this world for how long? On average for about 70, 75 years. You may die at the age of 10, 20, at the age of 90, average 70 years. But what will happen in the Akhirah? In the Akhirah, you are sacrificing your luxury. If you take pains here and sacrifice your luxury here, in Akhirah, you will go in Jannah. So I have, alhamdulillah, prevented thousands of Muslims from Pakistan from Bangladesh to migrate to America and to Canada and USA. Alhamdulillah, thousands of them. So migrating is out of the question. If you are born, then is the question migrating is further or not. But you migrating from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country for a better living is totally prohibited. Even though it may be a country like Canada, it may be better than the other countries. I know there are many refugees going there, but yet, what you have to understand that Allah has made it very clear cut. That if you are born in that country, then you have option migrate or not. Migration is the best, number one. If you cannot follow your deen, it becomes the fard. If you can follow your deen, it becomes mustahab. Unless you are oppressed or weak or have no means, then it's permitted. I know many guys today from USA who want to come to Malaysia. I don't want to take their name because they may not have told to others. They spoke to me on one to one level. And they want to migrate to a Muslim country. And as I said in my earlier answer, one of the best Muslim countries to live today amongst all the Muslim countries yes. in Malaysia. There are negative points, but Alhamdulillah as a whole, it is the best available. Most of the dais that I know of, they know when I also go to give lectures, the person may be a president of an Islamic organization, but we know that his parents come and tell us, oh, the person is involved in these wrong activities, these haram activities, he has got so many girlfriends, he does zina. That's not known to the world. Zina is very common. So the percentage of Muslims living in Western country doing Zina is multiple times more than living in a Muslim country. You cannot compare. There are sins in the Muslim countries, but the level in the non-Muslim countries is much higher. I know many Dais who want to leave. There are few Dais who promote and say, oh, I'm very happy and because of America, I've become a good Muslim. All this is nonsense. They don't know the Quran well. They talk about the Quran, but according to me, don't they know the verse of this Quran? And the context was Muslims living in non-Muslim land of Surah Sunnisa, chapter 4, verse number 97. Where Allah says, if you live among the mushrikeen, you will go to hell. It is very clear cut. How can they say, how can they misguide the people by saying, oh, America is very good, it has changed my life. What you should do? I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even staying in America, Allah has saved me. This should be a dai. Not promoting America. For what? The person which is against the Muslim, the country which is against the Muslim as a whole. How can you promote such a country? So these dais have actually, I don't agree with them at all. But they are very few. In percentage wise, a very small number. But the majority of the dais, even today, I, when I meet them on a personal level, they would love to migrate. And some of them are staying because, okay, they want to convey the message, no problem. That's accepted in Islam. But for a Muslim to migrate from a Muslim country to non-Muslim country, this, according to the scholars, is not permitted except for education for the particular time or for being a full-time die. Hope that answers the question.